What's up guys, it's your boy Pulse Libby back at it again with another video. Today I'll be talking about the Heat's offseason and what might go down. At the end of the video I'll explain where I've been and why I haven't uploaded in a while, but other than that, let's get into it. At the time of this video, the Heat are down 3-2 to to the Lakers. This series has exposed the Heat's weaknesses and strengths. It has made it easier for me to do another offseason's prediction video. So, where do I start? The Heat need to resign some pieces. Our priority free agents should be two players, Goran Dragic and Jay Crowder. Goran is going to be coming off his plantar fascia injury that he got in Game 1 of the Finals, and Jay's been streaky when it comes to shooting. That doesn't sound like priority, right? Wrong. Goran's skill set and chemistry with the players is very important to this team. Jay Crowder's defense and intensity is very important as well. Not to mention when he hits shots, this offense is elevated to a whole nother level. Is there anybody who we won't prioritize but will most definitely go after? Myers Leonard. I don't know what Myers would want in free agency, but the way he cares about this team and how much he loves to see them succeed is special. I believe we will sign him back. Now that leaves a few outliers. Our other free agents in Solomon Hill and Derek Jones Jr. Solomon Hill didn't see playing time until the Celtics and Lakers series. He did his job well, but there is one thing in question about Hill, and that is how much does he want? I believe that the Heat will offer him the minimum to return, but will he accept that? I don't know all too well. Lastly, we have Derek Jones Jr. Everybody loves him, there's no doubt, but he is due for a payday. I do believe that he will want to come back, but I do believe other teams will give him a very tempting offer. The Cavs and Bulls are names I've heard the most. If you're freaking about Udonis Haslam, don't worry. I do think he's going to retire after the season. Now, is there anybody who we might trade? I do believe there are some players. Those two are Kelly Olenek and Kendrick Nunn. Why do I think they would get traded? Inconsistent play and contracts. They both have one year left on their deal and are both relatively cheap. Kelly's getting paid $12.1 million, while Nunn's only getting paid $1.6 million. Very tradable contracts. Kelly would probably get traded to a team struggling with spacing, while Nunn would probably get traded for a team looking for a solid starting guard who's only 25 years old. The Heat also may try and package them to make a very compelling offer to a team. Now, to the fun part. Who do the Miami try and target in the 2020 free agency? I do believe we will target some players. Let's start off with the ones that are going to be obvious. First, Serge Ibaka. The Heat could benefit heavily off a big man who could coexist in the backcourt with Bam. That requires them to be able to shoot the three ball. Serge has transformed into an ideal stretch four or five, shooting 38.5% from deep this season, not to mention his defensive ability. It may not be what it once was back in OKC, but he's still a very respectable defender. The next option is Danilo Gallinari. The Heat almost landed a trade for him at the trade deadline, but it fell through. Gallinari being an elite three-point shooter would be very good for the Heat. His defense isn't very good, but offensively, he definitely makes up for it. Now, more free agents that we should pursue. Aaron Baines would be a very good option that we would play when Bam is tired. Baines is a respectable three-point shooter, shooting 35% from three this year. Not to mention, he would be another veteran and good mentor for our younger big men. He would also be a lot cheaper than some of these other options. Another option is Joe Harris. I know what you're thinking, another shooter? You can never have enough shooters. Having him off the bench would be huge for offense. He's also not a terrible defender. There's one player that I believe that he will look into, but for us to go for him would come with some sacrifices. His name is Fred Van Fleet. This one I find a lot less likely to happen than the others. He will be getting paid, and not to mention targeted by every team in the NBA. He is a good shooter, a good defender, a good playmaker. He doesn't really have any weak points besides maybe height. I don't believe we will get him. He will probably want a long-term deal, which interferes with Pat Riley's plan, but that's why I say this comes with some sacrifices. It's something to keep an eye on, but he would fit beautifully on the Heat. Those are all my thoughts and predictions. Do you agree with my predictions? Do you disagree with any of them? Who do you think we should target? Let me know in the comments. If you want to know where I've been, then stick around. But if not, thanks for watching.
Hey guys, um, so there's been a few things that have happened since I last made a video. Well, school, school's just started back and I've just been, just been unmotivated to make any videos. I've also been exhausted when I get home, but I've started living a healthy lifestyle, working out and dieting, so it isn't all bad. It's safe to say I've been blessed with how my channel's been getting more attention. I've taken it and you guys for granted, and I'm sorry for that. To the guy that DM'd me on Instagram, I'm sorry the video took so long. I've been putting off making a video for a while. Uh, this one's for you and all my subscribers. Uh, thank you guys. It means a lot to me, and I hope you're doing well through this through this pandemic. Um, I hope you all stay safe and have a good night or day.